What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today I'm tackling another one of those pesky little coffee terms that's kind of been bothering me for quite some time, and that term is the dead espresso shot. This is a common bit of lingo that's used within baristas and coffee enthusiast circles to describe a shot that's no longer palatable, or in layman's terms, tastes like shit. But there's no guidance or really ideas on how or why a shot gets to that point. At Starbucks, they train on the 10 second rule, which essentially means you have to use that shot or put it into a drink within 10 seconds of being pulled, or it's essentially trash. In specialty shops, this timeline has been extended up to maybe a minute to three minutes, but you can also salvage a shot by adding it to a milk drink like a latte or a flat white. Yet in barista competitions, it's pretty rare that the judges will even touch their espresso course until the espresso has been pulled for about one to two minutes because you're not gonna get a lot of those nuanced flavors out of a super hot shot. I even ran a poll on my Instagram story a little while back to see how fast my followers actually drink their shots and I was pretty shocked. Out of over 500 votes, it was split almost 50-50 on those who drink their shots between 10 seconds to one minute and those who take their time up to and beyond three minutes. Originally, when I set out to make this video, I had this whole thing broken down into three different sections. One about everyone's favorite foam, aka crema, the ever-changing temperature, and the constant crawl of time. But then I realized all three of these variables are clearly tied together, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense to talk about them separately. Of course, I think that we can all agree that just like these frail meat shells we live in, the shot of espresso begins to degrade as soon as it's done extracting. The liquid cools, the crema thins, and the shot ages. All three of these interconnected variables will of course play a role in the lifespan of your espresso shot. So what I wanted to find out, at least in the case of this lovely Ethiopian I'm roasting a little giant, at what point these three variables hit the end of their tastiness and begin to go in the opposite direction. And what I found may actually shock you. This mythical point in the lifespan of a shot of espresso shouldn't be that hard to find. In fact, it should just take a little bit of trial and error, so that's what I did in my own lab, all while wearing no pants. First, I'm going to address crema and tell you that the fact is it's not an indicator of a shot's quality. I did cover this a bit in a recent Coffee Myths video, but crema is surprisingly resilient and doesn't just disappear in a minute, or even three. Plus saying crema is a required part of espresso is only partially true. If extracted properly, every espresso shot should have some crema, but what you do with it, stir it, sip it, or scrape it, is entirely up to your personal preferences. But now let's get to the meat of this experiment. After pulling six nearly identical shots, I tasted them at varying times while also tracking their temperatures. At 10 seconds and roughly 156 degrees, it's still a little on the warm side, so there isn't as much nuance as I'd like, but it's got a lot of creamy texture. At one minute and about 150 degrees, it's noticeably sweeter and brighter. It still has some nice texture, but gives way to some of the broader flavor notes. At two minutes and around 143 degrees, the sweetness is even higher and the brightness has kicked up too. But those more nuanced flavors have come out to play and mingle pretty well with the remaining texture. At three minutes and 135 degrees, the sweetness and acidity seem to have topped out. The texture is less creamy and more thin and slightly juicy, but has all of the flavor I enjoyed at two minutes. At four minutes and 132 degrees, there is no distinguishable difference in sweetness and acidity, but the broader notes are gaining more strength and the aftertaste seemed to pop with a lot of the nuanced flavors from minute two and three. Even up to five minutes, it's still roughly 130 degrees and was still nearly indistinguishable from minute four. From here, I kept tasting and tracking the temperature of the shot all the way up to 10 minutes. Now at 110 degrees, it's finally beginning to reveal some harsh bitterness, roasty flavors, and it's becoming a little metallic. Well, here we are, over-caffeinated and intellectually stimulated, so let's break down what we learned today. First up, I think we can all officially write off the Starbucks 10 second rule as total and complete rubbish. Also, the idea of a dead shot, like many things in coffee lingo, isn't really based in science. There are way too many variables like the bean, the cup, the brew temperature, and more importantly, your personal preferences. For me, I find that my preferences with most espresso shots land securely in and around the two to three minute range and roughly 140 to 130 degrees, because the blend of the shot texture and the clarity is really what I live for when it comes to espresso. 
I know this is a little long for a video that has no real tangible result that you can hang on your fridge or submit for scientific peer review, but just like the Godshot video I did before, this is just one of those terms that is so ambiguous, it really just means nothing to everyone, but something to someone, if that makes sense. And as I wrap this whole video up, of course, I feel like I should say that this is one man's opinion. And I'm just kind of laying it out there. Take this experiment, do it on your own, and find those sweet spots for you. Because in the end, personal preference is what really matters here. So for now, I'm going to leave you with that little bit of homework, and I look forward to hearing your results and discussing them with you, as well as your thoughts on this video in the comment section down below. And of course, as you all know, I'll see you next week. And of course, a big thank you to my February Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Mika, Samantha, Bound Coffee, Claire, Stephen, James K, Josh, Andrew Horrison, Corey C. Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, UK Espresso, RD, Tim, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Home Barista Coach, Testing123, Jason C, Jerry, Matt, Zachary V, Tyler F, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Chris M, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, Sebastian, Matthew C, JRC, Absolute and Stephen G. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Spermetheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, Pony Boy. <laughs>